Hi everyone, today we are speaking with Mr. Marwan Ahmed Lutfi who has been the CEO of Al Ittihad Credit Bureau since September 2013. Mr. Lutfi has led the setup and launch of the Seoul Credit Bureau in the United Arab Emirates and has been instrumental in establishing it as the key enabler for the financial services industry and a powerful data platform that enriches users with knowledge and analytics. Good morning Mr. Marwan, uh, my name is Liana, from, I'm a correspondent from Hyderabad. The, first of all, I want to thank you for doing this interview for us and uh, the main object is to know your innovative services that you're providing for companies and individuals in the UAE. Could we start with the questions? Sure. Thank you. Could you brief us about AECB, its products and how is it helping the individuals and companies in the UAE? Well, uh, AACB Al Ittihad Credit Bureau uh, is a company set up by the federal government uh, to provide uh, credit reporting and credit scoring uh, and value added services to help uh, decision makers take uh, decisions relating to extending credit to individuals and companies. Uh, so, we have started aggregating information from banks regarding credit facilities for individuals and companies, from telco operators, from uh, courts, from several different areas, utility companies such as water and electricity where we can create a report that includes all of your financial obligations and uh, show a pattern of whether you're actually making these payments uh, in a timely manner. All of this comes in the form of a credit report, which generally banks use uh, to actually extend for the sort of, uh, forms of credit. And that for any company specifically for your community in High Dubai means it's very important for someone to understand what their uh, obligations are. It's actually all formed in a credit report against these companies. And whether they're pay making the payments on time or not will actually help uh, make that decision easier for uh, entities, whether they're banks extending facilities or companies extending credit lines uh, on, on buying items on consignment uh, to, in order for them to assess the risk associated with giving you such credit lines. What information is considered uh, while calculating an individual and company's credit report and score and what is the source of your data? Yeah, uh, the information is very important. Anything relating to credit and credit, we mean any future uh, form of payment obligation. So a credit could be a credit card, uh, could be a, uh, a facility that might you've taken a, a mortgage if you're buying an office or, or property or a company car, for example. Uh, and the same time, also your company telephone and internet lines provided by the likes of it, Salat and Do. Uh, your water and electricity bills around the uh, UAE different providers. All of these are future payments. You receive a bill against them and you make a payment. And that generally goes into your report. Now the credit score specifically is a, is a, is a behavioral score, which means it's a prediction that tells you how likely you are you're, uh, in, in missing a, a payment in the next 12 months. And that generally depends on the historic data that we have against the company uh, specifically that actually says whether they're making their payments on time or not. And it gives an indication to help quick uh, and sort of uh, to help quick screening when you're applying for services uh, to actually use a credit score and you'll see that credit scores are, are extensively used by banks and other entities as well. How can an individual or a company receive the credit report and score? So is consent a mandatory and what is the price of the data? Well, there are two angles to this question probably. First, is uh, the banks that generally are the uh, entities that are subscribing with us that have access uh, to uh, to seek a credit report or a credit score of an individual or company normally would require consent and these consents are generally uh, in the terms and conditions of any application form or anything that you submit so that's one angle but the other angle as a self as an individual uh, you can actually you don't need the consent for yourself of course but you need to be authenticated and verified whether you have the ability to do so for individuals it's very easy you can uh, you can actually go online and uh, either through our website or our application, download uh, the AECB credit report app or go to our web portal and register there and we can you can register through UAE Pass or actually a different uh, authenticated manner through an OTP and you will be authenticated and you can buy it online and the report and score are delivered actually online in, in a seamless manner. For companies, however, because companies have different authorities and different levels of who's authorized to, to take what, we've facilitated that, making it easy to access it online. So only re credit reports, you can submit a request to buy a credit report online to our uh, website, aecb.gov.ae. Uh, and by filling that, what you will do is you'll you'll be uh, inputting a credit card number. You will take a pre-authorization on that card. Uh, a member of our team will actually verify whether the document submitted, trade license, uh, you know, the name of the manager is that person requesting it, authorized to actually get that. 
that. We'll do a very quick video verification call through Teams or Zoom or whatever is convenient, and we'll issue it again uh, to the uh, to the emails as well. So, so we've made it easy that no one needs to visit us uh, to get their credit report, and uh, hopefully through our digital channels or websites and apps. Uh, can the customers uh, update? the credit report and score if some of your data are wrong? It's absolutely possible. It's, it's, uh, remember that we are operating in a full digital environment. So all of the data that comes to us, we have over 24 million contracts uh, in our database, over 14 million individuals and companies registered in our, uh, in our credit registry. And I think it's very important to understand that these are not human generated data, which means they're systems talking to systems. So sometimes, yes, absolutely, it could happen. Uh, errors in, in the data submitted are there. I'm glad to say that we've never had any dispute on an error. We've had data correction errors. We've made it also easier. So if an individual or a company requires some uh, error, and, and uh, for example, they close the credit facility, but the bank still shows it as active in their credit report, uh, and they have the evidence on, on that document, then they submit a request online. We have a data correction uh, pro uh, form online. Uh, where you put all of the ID of the document uh, and all of the details, it registers it as a ticket with us, and then we handle it. And generally, between five to ten working days, all of these uh, basically are generally uh, edited and corrected through the data provider itself. Now, that's a process that generally, depending on the size of the organization where the data is coming from, is what the average is. However, we have provided tools that these things can be actually made instantly. However, the law very clearly says that the onus of submitting accurate information is with the data provider and the Tahad Karab Bureau does not change data here uh, on itself. So we have to make sure that the source changes the data. But we've made that able uh, basically facility to be uh, to be done by the data providers in an instant manner as well. So, so in reality, you could do it in literally a few seconds, but depending on how busy the other organizations are, generally it will take between five to 10 working days. Uh, so that's really nice to know that, you know, even if there is an error, you can be able to Absolutely. Uh, can you tell us about uh, your brand new product, which is uh, CheckScore? Yes, CheckScore was uh, in the making for uh, quite some time. Uh, at least a couple of years. Uh, it was basically driven by the idea of uh, decriminalizing uh, bounce checks. Uh, and this, of course, was enforced this year through the insolvency and the bankruptcy laws that were that came into action in 2022. Uh, our aim for check score was to actually, you know, the UAE transacts in near 30 million checks a year. Uh, and, and the business, especially with SMEs, with a lot of the trade businesses, Checks is a standard form of, uh, of payment. And again, PDC specifically, post-dated checks are, are very standard. But in reality, you, we have built it on trust. So the trade market has built it on trust. I know you, you don't know me, but if, in order to do business, I must somehow trust you to actually say, you know, I'm going to uh, assume that I will collect my, uh, my check within a month's time or six months time or three months time. What we're trying to add here is actually add one extra level of comfort that you did not have. Today, you take a check. Uh, you take it and you assume that this check will, you don't have any insight whether this check is actually going to bounce or not. What we've developed with check score is when we actually enter the check score, the, the check details within the app itself or the or through the, or the portal, we actually take the information that is linked to that issuer of that uh, check uh, account. We, link, we look at the, all the credit history that is linked to that issuer, to that specific account as well. And we generate a score that will actually will be able to give you some guidance on how likely a check is to bounce. So in the current form today, you deal with checks and saying, I'll take it, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that I get this. But in reality, if you take that check and you scan it and enter the details instantly, literally in less than a minute, you can actually get a probability from one to 99% of how likely this check is going to bounce. And when you receive this, you automatically can make a different decision than what you normally would be doing on, on the spot itself. So in cases where you have a high probability of bounce, uh, you know, 70 or 80 percent probability of bounce. What you would normally do as an entity is by knowing the score, and this score costs only 10 dirhams. Is really is understanding how you manage your cash flows. And, and if I have, for example, you know, 100,000 dirhams tied up with one PDC uh, in the future, and right now I see a high probability of bounce, I normally sometimes try to say, okay, well, can you pay me 30,000 or 40,000 or 40% 40 uh, immediately right now and then break the other, maybe and give more extension, say, and I'll, I'll take the remaining in three months instead of two months, for example, right? Because in the other year, cash flow is extremely important to SMEs and to the to the community. And if you don't have cash flow, then it has a ripple effect. And that's what we're trying to say is, how can you manage cash flows by understanding the risks of accepting checks? Yeah, 
this will the checks go to really help the companies that are there in the UAE. The last question is going to be: Do you have any plan to add a new product to your portfolio? Yeah, absolutely. I think the importance of the Tahad Credit Bureau have been seen in the banking sector. We are considered critical infrastructure when it comes to banking and finance, but. The role of a credit bureau is not only in banking and finance. A lot of government entities are actually using our services right now because managing credit, sometimes people link it to banks and finance companies. But in reality, everyone manages credit. You know, uh, telco operators today are are forced by the the big manufacturers such as Apple and Samsung to buy you know to push the number of units in the market. And again, everything is becoming more expensive. Phones are becoming the three, four, five thousand dollar range. You can't expect everyone to pay cash for it. But what the telco operators are actually doing right now is actually giving you installment capability on buying a new iPhone or a new Samsung phone, for example, is technically extending credit. So they're acting like a bank, and by doing that. They automatically need the services of the Tahad Karabir. So you, I, I, I can happily say that you'll see this on their apps as well. Let Salat and do both use the credit scoring as a form of, uh, you know, important screening step before extending you uh, the ability or setting limits on how many phones you can get or how many installments or how far the installments go. Uh, you have the likes of the BNP, uh, BNPL players, the, the buy now and pay later players, where, where basically right now. Uh, You'll see them popping on every online site right now that you have to make payments in four monthly installments. These are also talking to us as well where they're saying, okay, how can I improve? What all of the entities want is how to, can I improve my credit basically exposure so that at least I limit the risk of non-payment. Right? It's very simple. So you'll see a lot of this. You'll see utility companies, government companies, real estate is going to be, become extremely important. Hopefully for us next year, we might be launching a new product uh, related to, uh, to real estate. Because in the end of the day, you go to any mature market, you will not be able to rent a property without having a credit score or a credit report, right? Because it, it gives you an insight of how that person is, how that person is likely to behave. Are they going to miss payments? Am I going to get into trouble renting to that individual? And, and how you can manage that. But as you said, rent, rent the reason is slightly different than checks because it's not transaction and, and business based. But it's the same thing. The most common form of payment today is checks for rent. But a lot of entities are, are trying to look into the direct debit model. So today we have several uh, large real estate companies that are actually using our services uh, as well, uh, where they're actually offering direct debit to their clients. They're offering monthly payments. I mean, if that changes in the rental sector, right, in the property sector to make, to be able to make monthly rent payments, it just changes the whole industry. And what we are trying to do is we're trying to enable that change by giving you some sort of insight of how likely a tenant is going to miss a rental payment. This will really help a lot of individuals that are there in UAE that are trying to do business in the market. Absolutely. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Imagine. We wish your community the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.